Opening day at any racetrack is always exciting for not only the horse people here, but also the fans and most of all the jockeys. We took our cameras on opening day and we're going to show you some of the fun and excitement, not only with the riders, but those also involved in the sport. We're taking you places where you've never seen before. Before the first race, the stewards met with the rider colony at Hastings. Start of the season, uh, wish you all good luck. Want you to stay safe out there. Watch for each other, give each other enough room. We talk to them uh, if we've had any rule changes that'll affect them and uh, kind of want them to know to, to ride safe and, and give each other a little room. And you know, coming into a race meet like this, there's a few of those boys that are a little bit hungry and they get aggressive and, and we try to stop that before it starts, let them know if there'll be consequences and, and uh, let them know that what the whips uh, are and, and uh, you know, to uh, not abuse them and, and the, and uh, the popper size and, that, and the feathers on the stick and it, just general information you want to refresh them with. And we asked a few of the jocks what their goals for the season were and how important it is to get off to a good start. It's like anything, that, that first little buzz that gets going, gets a lot of attention, everybody notices you, it just helps everybody want you. It's very important to get a good start on me, even the first, uh, you know, the first weekend. Just these people, you know, on the back side, they, they see you, you're, you're doing good and then you get more horses to ride next week. And it's very, very important to get a like, good start. You've been leading a rider a couple of times. What's your goal this year? Oh, I like to be a leading rider always, you know. But it's, uh, you know, such a good rider over here, so it's not easy to be a leading rider with this colony, but a good rider this year, yeah. I think it's going to be tough, but I'm going to try anyways. Looks uh, promising. Looks promising. I got a good three-year-old Colt and a good three-year-old uh, filly. Uh, so, you know, it looks pretty good. I got a, you know, a good older horse with uh, crazy coffee. It's post time for the first race, and we just couldn't resist asking the winning connections how it felt to be victorious early. Rule the girl to open up the 2009 live season with a win. Jeff, great way to start the day. It sure is. Getting uh, the first win is always an important thing to get done, and uh, we were happy that it, uh, it happened for us today. Steve, how about you? It's outstanding. Tommy, leading trainer. First time in my life. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> how about you? You're leading owner. Uh, that's going to be nice for another race or two. How many more days you got to go? Uh, 75. We'll be all right. I'll keep going. We're not done yet, Tom. It's still early. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Frankie, earlier we talked how important it was to get it off to a good start. You just did it. What goes to your mind? Well, yes. Usually it's a have a good break and it's been six, six and a quarter for longs. You gotta be up there because I'm mean, horse they're gonna get tired. Especially these fields come from California and it's still harder and it's such a wonderful rapids. At the start it's a good start and people's gonna see it's gonna open up doors for you. Good luck. Thank you. It proved to be a great start for veteran rider Frank Fuentes as Frank went on to win three more in opening day for a total of four victories. Truly a great start for Frank. Rob King, the national manager for the Canadian Jockey Association, was in attendance on opening day, and Tom met up with Rob to find out what the association is involved with. I oversee all the jocks across Canada, so um, I look after the insurance, any dealings with management, uh, the stewards, uh, horsemen's association contracts, stuff like that, and I go from coast to coast. I'm going to run four questions by that our audience does not know about jockeys. You answer them. Go ahead. Pensions. There isn't one. Explain. Um, there had, there's never been one. Um, we're self, we're self-funded, and we fund our own insurance. And that, all our money goes to um, just looking after our insurance. Should our jocks get hurt, um, they're not covered under workman's comp. They're not eligible because they're athletes, and therefore we, we have to fa to facilitate our own insurance. We're self-insured. So when the shock retires, it could be tough, huh? It's over. You know, I mean, the, the money comes in. And that's the thing. you got to educate the younger riders. You think that you're going to be making this kind of money their entire lives, and you don't. At the end of your career, you got to save your money. And we try to educate them of that. Shock mounts, they vary, and what are they? Uh, depending on where you go. I mean, we go down to, to uh, Saskatchewan Marquee Downs, where they're like $40, and up to Woodbine, where the base mount would be $100. And every each according to the purse structure is, is how it, how it works out. Jocks make 10% of uh, what the winning owner share is all across Canada, and stake races is 10% across the board. Other races, 
Um, I mean, you can run in, it's like they say in the Kentucky Derby. Um, you can finish fourth in the Kentucky Derby and all you get is $100. So much controversy about weight. How difficult is it for a lot of riders? To lose weight? I was a jock for years and I struggled with my weight. Um, we brought it up a little bit over the last couple of years and it's a little easier than when I first began. But, you know, it's a daily struggle. And the uh, two pounds, just to lose two pounds. I remember when I was riding a Woodbine and uh, I went to Fort Erie only because I couldn't do the 116 anymore. And, and it, it was life altering to me to start carrying 118. Jocks going back and forth, can they flip flop racetracks? Yes, they can and no, they can't. So, I mean, that's a, a two prong answer. If you're a Canadian jockey, you can go wherever you want. If you're a foreign rider, they're signed in by the racetracks and, and they have to be at that racetrack. We met with a few of the horsemen and surveyed their hopes for the upcoming season at Hastings. Well, I think it's going to be a real good year. I do think that it's going to be tough races. I think it's going to be tough winning races. I don't think anybody's going to dominate. I think that uh, everybody's going to get to share it. I'm very excited to be here with Dale. We have a bunch of nice horses, some from Alberta, some from Toronto. We're very, very excited. A lot of people friendly here. Fantastic. Everybody in the office is just great. You know, their trainers have been very helpful. We're really, really enjoying it. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. The horses all look good and looks good. Are you excited? I'm very excited. <laughs> My horse is back this year and it's... it's Who do you have? I have Sammy Ad and then I have a two-year-old. So this is really going to be a nice year for you. Yeah, hopefully my two-year-old turns out. Between races, Hastings recognized with a ring presentation the leading rider for 2008, Mario Gutierrez. Mario had a great year in 08 and led all riders with 103 wins. The leading apprentice rider was Stephanie Fedora. Stephanie cracked the top 10 and racked up 40 wins on her way to the title. Opening day saw some of the best horses entered in what is considered to be a prep race for the John Longdon coming up in a couple of weeks. The field was small, but the winner established himself as a force to be reckoned with this year. All eyes were on the post parade for the last race of opening day. It featured a father and son riding against each other for the very first time. Hastings veteran Mark Walker walked into the paddock beside his son Tyler. Tyler had a successful start over the winter in Portland and is riding his first race at Hastings and as luck would have it, his father is in the race as well. I set two goals and one was to ride at Hastings and the other one was to have white teeth. And they're both coming true so I'm, I'm happy. Those are my New Year's resolutions and uh, things are working out. And I can't wait to hopefully beat my dad. <laughs> What's that like? Oh, it's, uh, I'm still, it hasn't hit me yet. It, it'll hit me when I put them silks on and we're in the gates together, but uh, still haven't been, in, I've been in these gates a lot, but never race riding, so this, this will be something else. Neither family member won the race, but a great time was had by all, and we look forward to watching father and son throughout the year.